And now Chrysler presents World of Water, starring Victor Jory. <laughs> Send Nelson in. And we're not to be disturbed unless it's urgent. Hi, Chief. Any word yet, Bess? Not a thing. My men are checking every railroad, bus line, and airport in the city. If he's still here, we'll find him. We never should have let him get out of our sight. The way his mind is working now, he's too dangerous. Much too dangerous. He'll turn up. He's got to. My bet is he goes back to that boarding house. We should have kept closer tabs. It's my fault. I should have tried talking to him once more. Oh, no use blaming yourself, Les. Kramer's a strange man. Egotistical, stubborn, and psychotic. That's what we should have remembered. What about the reports? Any new ones coming in? Yes. Les' report was flashed from Baltimore only an hour ago. It's waiting against him. Wondering where he'll strike next. What city, what state. Oh, this is no good. Let's go over his files again. Maybe if we hear it read aloud, we get an idea. Right now, we're certainly working from the shoestrings. Well, there's not much here. European records, war classification, personal history. I know, I know, but read over every detail again. Kramer, France, doctor of chemistry. Age 57, height 5 feet 10 inches, weight 170. Hair graying, eyes brown. Graduate Berlin University, 1960. Oxford, 1920 to 1923. Speaks perfect English. Interned at Balak Concentration Camp, 1940. Released, 1945. Came to the United States, 1947. Employed for two years at the Fremont Atomic Project as a soil specialist. Nervous breakdown, 1949. Institutionalized at County Hospital. Released, 1950. Get to the present. When was the last time you made contact? May 5th, two weeks ago. Visited his boarding house on Hudson Street. Found him depressed and uncooperative. He had set up a small lab in his room and was starting to work again. Just a moment. Just a moment. I will be with you shortly. Oh, Miss Farrell. I mean, Nikki. I wasn't expecting you so soon. This is a delight, a pleasure. I just stopped by and make sure you got the tickets. Say, so what are you doing this dump? It always smells like a zoo. Oh, I'm sorry, Nikki. I'm sorry. It's my work, my chemicals. I will open the window. There. That is better. You see, when I concentrate, I notice nothing. I just came from work. I wanted to make sure you got the tickets from the show. You got them, didn't you? Oh, yes, yes, I got I did not forget. Oh, but am I tired? Oh, my feet. Oh, my poor little feet. As soon as I leave here, I'm going to soak them in the tub. Well, they are very pretty feet. They should not give you trouble. Oh, I'm not complaining about their looks. It's just the walking they got to do. That I object to. A waitress's life has got no compensations. Maybe someday you will not have to be a waitress. Maybe someday there will be somebody who will be serving you, somebody who will be happy to do things for you. <laughs> Fat chance I got. I gave up on Santa Claus years ago. Uh, but tell me about the tickets. Uh, you got them near the front, like I said. The orchestra, I like to sit real close. It was very hard, Nikki. The show is popular. The seats are expensive. I did not have much money. You promised. 
You promised. You said you'd do anything I asked if I went out with you. I don't like men who lie. No, no, no. I got them. I got them. I got them. But maybe not just what I would like, but... But close. We can see everything. Mm. That's better. I like to be right near the stage. Almost touching. You would like to be on the stage, maybe. Oh, boy, would I ever. If I could buy you pretty clothes and take you places, you would like me a little better? Yeah. <laughs> you? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. That's a good one. You're real cute, Mr. Kramer. Real cute. You and me. That's the best one today. Oh, no, please, please. Please don't, Nikki. Don't. Don't make a joke. I, I could make lots of money. I, I could do many things. I bet you say that's all the girls. Oh, no, no. <laughs> like this one, for instance. Oh, no, that is my niece. That's Edith. She is a chemist, too. She works in the Tremont Atomic Laboratory. I'm very proud of her. She's coming to visit me next month. She wrote to me I'm a closest relative. She is the most important thing in my life. Who's that, another one of your nieces? I do not know. I was expecting no one else. Hello, Dr. Oh. Kramer. May I come in? It's you. I told you once I was through with you. I hope I didn't interrupt anything important. You have no right to come here. Nothing you can say will make me change my mind. Who's your cute friend? He is not my friend. He's going shortly. He's leaving. Uh, well, I won't keep you boys from any business. You call me when he leaves, Mr. Kramer. We don't want to be late for the show. I'll be in my room, dressing. Seem to have nice, friendly neighbors. Why do you come here? You have no right to. I was hoping you'd change your mind. Change my mind? I will not change my mind. I will not work for your government. You cannot force me to. I do not want to work for you. You're being rather foolish, aren't you, Dr. Kramer? Existing like this? Living this kind of life? Wasting your talent. You're a great chemist, Dr. Kramer. Our country's faced with an emergency, and we need your help. Yes, you'll need me for the same reasons the others wanted me, to make murder weapons. I won't do it. I won't do it. You would have to force me. That's just it. We wouldn't force you to do anything. You're a member of a free society now. I'm only asking that you help preserve that freedom. Yes, I know. Once before, I listened to their speeches, and they came, and they took my work, and they turned it toward destruction. And when I protested, they threw me in a concentration camp. I have not forgotten. Okay, okay. Have it your way. See, you've begun to work. That's good. Is there a law against men tinkering? Oh, I'd certainly be the last one to stop you. By the way, what have you done about your new theory, the one that was published in last month's Scientific Digest? I do not know what you are referring to. The one on diatomic water. You spoke of a solvent that could dissolve earth, stone, practically all substance. A solvent that could transform all solids into liquid. That was only a theory, an idea, a hypothesis. Your article sounded pretty... Convince it. It's a pretty wonderful instrument, the proper hands. They are going to fall into no hands. And now, please, good day, Mr. Nelson. You are keeping me from my work. Dr. Kramer, don't bear a grudge against 150 million people. They're just human beings. They want the same thing, peace and happiness. Good night, Doctor. Mr. Kramer. Aren't you ready? I'm getting a little hungry. No, come in, come in. Just another minute. Don't you think I look like Shelley Winters? Who? Oh, you. You don't know nothing. She's a movie star. Everybody says we're spitting images. No doubt, no doubt. Your friend was kind of cute. He's of no importance. He wanted to give me a job. Oh, a job. Say, that's swell. Maybe you'll be making more money. Maybe we'll go out more, show some stuff. I want nothing from him. You mean you refuse? Yes. You're crazy. You ain't been able to get a job in over two months. How can you turn anything down? I would not understand. Imagine turning down a job. Just after you finished telling me how much you'd do for me if you had money. I think you're phony. You're just plain crazy. Don't say that to me. Don't you All talk right, that way. I, I don't... Yes, sir. No offense. I'm sorry, Nick. Nicky. Nicky, I was wondering. 
Maybe you would like to quit your job to travel, to go to another city, maybe. Maybe even get married. <laughs> Who are you kidding? No, you would like to get married to stop work? Sure. But I need someone with a lot of money. I got expensive taste. Nikki, it's been three weeks now since you moved into the room across the hall. In three weeks, one one can learn a lot. Hey, what is this anyway? We're Mickey, going to be late for the I show. I have been watching you. You're so young. Oh, here we're life. getting morbid. Come Please. on, let's Will you off. listen to me? I'm asking you to be my wife, to marry me, to go away with me. <laughs> oh, Mr. Kramer, you're so funny. You keep me in stitches. Me marry you? Stop laughing. Stop it. <laughs> you don't even have a job. Where'd we live? In this chemical factory? I could get a job in any chemical plant I wanted. I could make money, lots of money. I could buy you pretty clothes. What do you but... know about chemicals? Putting around here making bad smells? No, no, I could work anywhere. I have a reputation. My work yes. is respected. Come on, this is getting boring. Please, you don't believe it, but I am a chemist. I can hold down any job I wanted to in Europe. Let go in... of me. You're Please, me listen, I'm asking you to be my wife. Let go of me. I can't stand you. You smell of chemicals. You're a dull, sloppy old man. You give me the creep. Don't you say that to me. A counter girl refusing to marry Dr. Franz Kramer. Do you realize who I am? Get away from me. I ain't going to no show with you. You're crazy. You're a crazy old bum. Now, you don't know what you're saying. Wait. All right, I show you. I don't want to you see nothing. See. I want to go. Leave me alone. You will see now. You will watch. You will see what I am capable of. You will watch. What are you going to do? Don't hurt me. I didn't mean nothing on that. I will show you. There. That is what I could have given them. That is my secret. That is my work, my creation. What is it? I have found a process. We'll make a solvent. We'll solve and turn everything to water. All solids. Earth, rock, metal. Everything dissolved in my solvent. Leave me alone. I don't want to watch. You're man. You call me. All right. Look at this. I will show you. I could change the world to water if I wanted to. It feeds on everything. No, no. Call me names. Call me Helen. Oh, but remember this. Remember, I am the man who holds the world's destiny in his hand. Yes, so well, one left, and one just leave me alone. No, <laughs> this you must know. This you must. I don't want to see. Nothing remains except this vat. The one substance that will not dissolve. And only I know the secret. Only I know the secret. Hello there. Let me tell you why I'm wearing this cap. It's to remind you of a very important event. Graduation. Now, if you know someone who's graduating, you may have a problem selecting a gift. And certainly, you'll want to give something that will be loved and used. For example, if you're choosing a gift for a girl, here's a wonderful idea. The new bracelet watch. The exciting new style every girl wants today. Now, you'd usually pay $50 or more for a glamorous gift like this. But I can show you a way to get this same style at a saving of $40. You can transform the watch she now owns into this exciting modern style if you give her a new fantasy watch band by Chrysler. And look what happens when she adds this to her watch. Yes, immediately her watch becomes a beautiful new bracelet watch. But you don't pay $50. You pay just $9.95 for Chrysler's fantasy and save $40. Now, here's a close look at it. The new Chrysler van that really becomes part of her watch, that makes it high fashion, and a true bracelet watch. It's the new Chrysler van called Golden Fantasy. What a wonderful gift for a graduate. And notice this. This van expands, so when she wears a fantasy, she gets all the safety and convenience of an expansion band. And practical? Well, when she's doing work around the house, she can slip fantasy up, out of the way. And golden fantasy costs less than many ordinary bands. Only $9.95, federal tax included. So go to your jeweler, ask to see the perfect graduation gift. The Fantasy Watch Bracelet by Chrysler. Now back to our story world of water, 
Starring Victor Jory. Well, do you want me to go on? By all means, let's cover everything. Somewhere in that setup, there's a key factor. One clue that will help us. Excuse me. Lane speaking. Yes, Mac. What? It doesn't seem possible. Yes, yes, by all means. Keep me informed. Who's that? McGinnis. This time it's Philadelphia. The town is half flooded with water. There's a panic on. They've declared martial law. Makes the fourth one today. Boston, New Haven, Baltimore, and now Philadelphia. We just had one tangible lead, something to go on. All we've got is what is in that report. But go ahead, read on. We've got to find the answer. Next important entry concerns his niece. Her name is Edith Kramer. She's been working at Fremont Atomic Project as a junior laboratory assistant. Kramer was her legal guardian, saw her through high school and college. She seemed to be the one thing he lived for. Who's that? It's only me, Mr. Kramer. This is me. Oh, yes. Yes, I come. I come. I am busy. I don't have much time. But I ain't seen you for over a week. I was worried Let about you. Let's finish more experiments. They have no time limit. My goodness, but your place is dirty. Don't you want me to clean? Later, later. Perhaps later. And Miss Farrell... You have heard from Miss Farrell? No, not since she checked out of here in such a hurry. Just packed your things and beat it. Didn't even give me no notice. No forwarding address, no nothing. But you paid up for, so it ain't my worry. I wanted to be friends. I want so young, so beautiful. What do you say, Mr. Even... Kramer? Nothing. Nothing. What did you want? Oh, my goodness. I nearly forgot. This telegram just came for you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, the next person I rent Mr. Farrell's room to, I'm going to make him give me reference. You know, these days, never can No, it's just not possible. Edith is dead. An atomic blast. Oh, Mr. Kramer, that's terrible. They have killed her. It is their fault. Now she is dead. The one person in the world who meant anything to me, the one person who kept me from being lonely... Now I have nothing. Oh, you better sit down, Mr. Kramer. I'll get you some coffee. Oh, no, get out. You don't oh, understand. Get out. Mr. Kramer. Get out, please. I want something. Oh, get out. You're not well. Get out. You need a doctor. Oh, you're... Oh! Edith, they are going to pay for this. They are going to pay. ago. That's the last anyone saw of him. Seems to have vanished into thin air along with all of his equipment. It's not a trace. Excuse me. Lane speaking. What? Where are they located? Yes, yes, by all means, send out every available unit. This thing must be stopped. They what? Well, you tell them that they've got to find a way. Wait a minute, I'm coming right down. Three new pools have been discovered. In Atlantic City, Wilmington, and Scranton. They're moving inland. Isn't there any way of stopping them? No. Not, not any way, apparently. Our best men have tried, but they can't seem to find out what it is. Well, they just seem to spring out of the ground and spread steadily. Where are you going? Down to communications. I've got to have first-hand reports. Well, what about Kramer? Well, keep after him. In the meantime, alert all units to stand by. The chief. The chief. Oh, Mr. Nelson. There you are. Dr. Kramer, where have you been? We've been searching everywhere for oh, you. you see the head of your department. I have something to announce. Is it about the water pools? You are the one responsible. speak to no one except the head of your department. I 
have a demand. It must be met. Things have got to be stopped. Do you have any idea what you've unleashed? This is just the beginning. You will never get away with this, Kramer. Our experts are already at the flooded areas. They'll dispose of them in no time. Well, we'll see. Will they? Will they? Look, Boston, New Haven, Philadelphia, Baltimore. The reactions are spreading. Each drop multiplies itself. Nothing can stop it. But how? What chemicals? You remember my article on diatomic water, my theory that all solids could be liquefied. Yes, but you said it was only a hypothesis, that it couldn't be done. I lied to you. It has been done. It is being done. All along the coast are 50 vials planted, and they are growing already, spreading, joining together. And only I know the compound that can stop it. What compound? How can you stop this thing? How? I must speak to someone in authority immediately. But, Dr. Kramer, you can't let this thing spread any further. Every second stops. Tell us how to stop this tragedy. They are going to pay death. They are going to pay death. You are out of your mind. Don't you say that. The reactions have started. Only I can control them. You're ill. You can't know what you're doing. Get me the hospital. Hospital? Yes, please hurry. This is an emergency. Hospital. Yes. Dr. Kramer, where are you going? Wait! Kramer, wait! Who is that, Nelson? Dr. Kramer, he's got to be stopped. Kramer! Hello. Get me the front entrance. This is an emergency. Hello, Boyer. This is Nelson up on two. There's a man with a briefcase coming out the front entrance. Alert all attendants. He must be stopped at all costs. He's insane. Right. If he gets out in those crowds, we'll never find him. Did he admit that he was behind all of this? He boasted of it. He set up a chain reaction along the whole Atlantic coast. He says nothing can stop it but some special compound that he's created. And that's stored away in his sick mind. Get... Hello? Yes. Yes, Boyer. No, it can't be helped, thanks. Well? Huh? They missed him. He got away somewhere out there in that crowd. Well, where do we go from here? I don't know. He didn't leave any notes. He destroyed everything in his room before he left. But somewhere there's got to be an answer. Well, we'll just have to go back and question everyone who ever knew him. Anyone who might possibly give us a lead. Like I said, he was a nutty old guy. Didn't even know who Shelley Winters is. I didn't go for him for a minute. I remember the night he asked me to marry him. <laughs> he was playing around with that chemical stuff. Threw a lot of things into a tub of water and they all disappeared. i never seen anything so crazy. I think he was trying to impress me or something. He was nutty. Nutty like a fruitcake. Oh, he, was a, he was a nice, quiet man. No friends, no family, just that one niece. Oh, she was a lovely girl and he was awful proud of her. And then... That telegram shocked him, it did. I could tell it affected him awful. You see, he was all alone. I guess nobody even remembers him anymore. Only six hours, and almost half of the coast is already flooded. Nelson, I want you to contact every newspaper, and every radio station, television station, because we've got to find this man, Kramer. Broadcast his description to every city, town, and village in this country. Somewhere he's starting another flood. Every new stretch of water must be reported. Whether it be in a field, a backyard, or a city lot, we've got to stop this terror. Time is fleeting. The waters are expanding. They're spreading destruction over our plains and cities. So find Kramer. Only he can halt the raging waters. Only he can save the world from submersion. So find him. Find Kramer. We can't rest until he's captured. Use every minute, every available man. This is a manhunt that must be successful. Our world is drowning. So find Kramer. Find him before it's too late. Now, before we have a few last words from the Chrysler kids, 
Let's look at one of the most famous watch band styles ever made. It's Your Signet by Chrysler, the only expansion band that's personalized with your own initials. Jack Chrysler. Jack Chrysler. On my hand. On your hand. Initial just for me, and so it's my band. It's your band. It's Chrysler. It's Chrysler. For me too. For you too. Makes your watch look better than new. Quality, style, and value too. For the best band in the land. It's Chrysler. Makes your watch look better than new. Makes it personal just for you. It's Chrysler. Suppose a medical doctor suddenly acquires fabulous equipment that cures every known disease. Next week, Tales of Tomorrow presents The Little Black Bag, starring Joan Blondell. Tales of Tomorrow will be brought to you next week by C.H. Maslin and Sons, makers of Beauty Blend Broadloom carpets and authentic hunting and fishing clothes. Here's a glance at just one of the new broadlooms Maslin has created for today's living. It's called Carioca, a cotton broadloom with a textured twist pile. Comes in 11 decorator colors, and it's priced at only about $6.49 a square yard. Carioca, a beauty blend broadloom by Maslin, your host next week on Tales of Tomorrow. Miss Talbot's gowns by Hannah Troy and Ann Verde. Makeup by Harry Burkhart. The preceding program, originally telecast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.